teams could make the NCAA tournament. Mississippi State's going to try to get there with a freshman opener. Reese Berline, who will be the first and in all likelihood not the last to throw for Mississippi State. She begins the game with ball one to Jenna Laird, 6.32 local time. It is a bit of a sticky night, but we'll take that in Fayetteville with clear skies overhead. The junior Jenna Laird takes strike one from Reese Berline, who opens the game because of her competitiveness for Mississippi State. Yeah, Reese Berline has had a solid freshman year for Mississippi State. More of an up-ball pitcher when you look at her numbers. More likely to have some more upspin in the zone. More fly ball outs. Outside. Paul Smokey Eds, our plate umpire, has the call on ball two there to Jenna Laird. The Missouri team that went 7-17 seven and 17 in the SEC this season. Just a half game behind Mississippi State, which played one fewer game due to weather against Georgia. <laughs> Laird takes an inside corner, strike two. Jenna Laird, fantastic start to her career at Missouri. Numbers are good, but a little bit down this season. And she is sixth in the SEC in hits, though the power has not been the same this year. On a 2-2, Laird flares one out of play. So the Missouri Tigers, fewest home runs for Missouri since 2007, but they have stolen a lot of bases. Alex Honnold is their big hitter, a likely first team all SEC pick behind Jenna Laird in the number two spot. Daly the big bat in the three hole behind her. There is Honnold who has carried this team at times after the loss of some terrific seniors. Kim Wirt, Brooke Wilmus, Kendall Bailey, Missouri's two, three, and four hitters a season ago. It's a much younger Tiger team this season. A ground ball from Laird on 3-2, and she will be out at first, barely. A diving attempt made by Riley Frizzell, or by Riley Holbeck, your pardon, the Mississippi State first baseman. Just barely in time for the first out of the game. Laird is hanging around, though, just in case Missouri wants an early challenge here. And I think we're going to get it. Can't hear Paul Ed's microphone, but we can read his lips. Look like Missouri's going to use a challenge on the first play of the game. Not too often that you see the first play of the game get reviewed. Close, but I think she got her. I think this will be will stand as it is. And that's one of the reasons why they make the first baseman's mitt that big. <laughs> yeah. And strong enough to hold the ball for when you dive into the bag mm -hmm. that it stays in there. The player first base has been upheld. The runner is out. So good job by Hull in only her 13th start of the season at first base. And Mississippi State, which has struggled defensively, begins with a good play for an out. Well, here's the all-world Missouri Tiger. Their superstar, their junior center fielder, who has put this team on her broad shoulders all season long. 5'8", junior out of West Des Moines, Iowa. Alex Honnold who fouls the first pitch out of play. Yeah, I oftentimes think that Alex Honnold gets overlooked in the SEC. Maybe it's because Missouri was 13 seed in the SEC coming into this tournament. But you, when you look at her numbers, home runs, hit for average, speed, power, she has it all. On all top five in the SEC in average on base and slugging percentage. She struck out 19 times. She has walked 41. And a 16 game on base streak, which features more than a walk a game. Honnold also to the right side. This ground ball cleaned up by Shea Moreno. So two ground outs to start for Reese Berline. 
mentioned that when you look at the heat map for Reese Burline, she's more up in the zone, but gotten a couple of ground ball outs with her drop ball inside. She'll be in the low 60s. We talked about it. She is more up in the zone. We'll work that change up, but looks like she's already trying to give these Missouri hitters a different look with her drop ball low and into the lefties. Two down, here's Kara Daly. Strike one to start Daly. Ten home runs, second on the Tigers. The ninth and tenth we showed you a few minutes ago, both walk-off blasts. Final home weekend of the season against Arkansas. That's up and away. There are not a lot of home runs in this Missouri lineup. Honnold has 13, Daly has 10. Julia Crenshaw has nine. The rest of the Tigers have 15 combined. Big cut by Daly. It's a good looking pitch right there. It goes to her curveball in the outside corner, moving away from Kara Daly. I like the way that Reese Burline, she is competitive. She's really smooth with her mechanics. There are a variety of different pitches, too. Ball. Burline started Friday and Sunday over the last weekend at Auburn. She only threw five total innings. What Mississippi State likes to do is use her one time through the order and then often go through the rest of the staff. Absolutely beautiful venue, one of the best in the conference, one of the best in the land, Bogle Park. Not many better places we could spend 12 games and five days worth of softball than this. Gonna have over 3,000 fans packed in at times, we suspect, when the Razorbacks play. Bulldogs Tigers tonight, the only game on the menu. As Daly walks, first base runner of the game, Carrot Daly, with her 18th walk of the season. Here's one of the great stories in Missouri's season. Julie Crenshaw, who was one of the most highly coveted recruits in the country out of high school, but has moved to the catcher position, a position she didn't even play. They wanted to get her bat in the lineup. They liked her athleticism behind the plate. They liked her hands behind the plate. And now, in her second year, you're starting to see the bat blossom as well. Yeah, you know those shortstops, oftentimes you can put them pretty much anywhere on the field, and they're going to look athletic. They're going to be able to fit right in. And finding her home back behind home plate was a big plus for this Missouri team. Just transitioning back there pretty easily. Redshaw fouls it right back off like the mask of Smokey Eds, which got knocked off by the foul ball. And there's your catcher checking on the home plate umpire, right? He's probably taken one off the mask a time or two and immediately goes back to Smokey Eds and says, hey, you all right? I know how that feels. Yeah, right on the front of the mask. Crowd had foul off, off of Crenshaw, off her foot. I'll tell you what, I really like the way that Reese Berline is spinning this drop ball and moving the ball more down the zone. If that had not hit off of her foot, it would have been another ground ball out for her. Let's get Missouri to roll over that pitch early. Do you think this is what Missouri expected? I think they expected it to be more up. A little two up, two and two for Crenshaw. 
You can tell, too, she's overthrowing her rise ball a little bit. We've seen a couple of those rise balls that have been well out of the zone, and Missouri probably looking at the plate, trying to look down. And so they see that drop ball, they bite at it, but a pitch like that above her head, they're not even going to chase. On a 2-2, Crenshaw gets a good rip. And Missouri is making Burline work here in the first inning. Her SEC tournament debut. 325 earned run average, her ninth start, her 26th game of the season. Sam Ricketts, her head coach. Josh Johnson, a terrific pitching coach for Mississippi State, which is among the best teams in the nation in terms of pitching strikeouts since Josh Johnson took over. A 2 2's in the dirt, a delayed steal for Daly when she saw it hit the dirt. And Kara Daly will make her way to second. This is what Missouri practices. They practice seeing the ball in the dirt and taking off. It's a big reason why that's their hundredth stolen base of the season. Even Kara Daly, who just has two stolen bases on the year, she anticipates that ball going down. She saw it out of the hand be a changeup, knowing that it could end up bouncing toward the catcher and take second base. She's at second, and she'll stay there on a walk. Back-to-back -back base on balls handed out by Burline. And the Tigers have a little something cooking with two outs. And an early visit from Jackie McKenna, senior catcher for the freshman Reese Burline. Thirteen strikes, twelve balls for Reese Burline. And she'll deal with Riley Frizzell, who has some power. Takes one a little bit high. Frizzell had a home run Sunday and a two-run single in Missouri's comeback win. They were down 6-3 midway through the fourth, came back to beat Arkansas. Big swing by Frizzell on strike one. Missouri with its lowest team batting average since 2012. A year ago, they were second in program history in home runs. This year, their fewest since 2007 in a full season. A lot of strikeouts, not a lot of walks. They struggled to score runs in SEC play. Ball down. The 7-17 seven and 17 after a 12 and 11 year with Samazu roll through the SEC tournament all the way to the championship game before losing to Arkansas. This is a team with only one senior in the starting lineup. Brazil the junior pops it up. No play for McKenna and hit the netting and that's strike two. They had a little bit of offense in the SEC Tournament Missouri. They really did win it with their pitching. Three consecutive shutouts. There's Larissa Anderson, who's in her fifth year now at Missouri. First time they made it to the SEC Championship game. 1-0 over Auburn, 3-0 over Bama and Tennessee. We're going to see Lauren Krings in a circle tonight. She was brilliant, along with Jordan Weber. Good duo last year and this year. And a strikeout ends the inning. Took a while to get there for Burline, a 30 pitch first, but she punches out Frizzell to strand a pair. Yeah, and Burline. She'll start with Chloe Malaulu, the senior for Mississippi State. It's an experienced lineup. Six seniors for the Bulldogs. And the two time captain Malaulu takes a strike at 70. Mississippi State just. 181 start their first six weeks of SEC play. They've hit it well the last couple of weeks, but the worst on base percentage in the league. Twelfth and run scored out of 13 teams. Malaulu, however, back at the top of the lineup, has had a nice little run to propel this hot streak for Mississippi State. To reach base her last 10 games. Home run and a triple threat. Colorado native Lauren Krings and her pitch fouled straight back. 
Here is the Mississippi State lineup put out by Sam Ricketts in her fourth year. Notably, it does not include Paige Cook, who missed three games last weekend, two for injury, one for personal reasons. Paige is not with the team today. They've been getting a lot of power from Kennedy and McKenna, who have trickled up the lineup here in the last few games. Inside. So this Mississippi State lineup, Amanda, no Paige Cook. The seniors, Kennedy and McKenna, starting to come through. It's looked a little bit different for Mississippi State, even without Cook the last few games. Yeah, it has, and I think that Mississippi State is just a team that's known to swing big in the SEC, and numbers might not tell always the whole story, but when you think of their years past, of the big home run hitters that have come through this program, they still have that aura, that identity, because of Sam Ricketts, such a good hitting coach. Their coaching staff is a complete staff that really develops these players, and offensively, Think of Mississippi State, you think of power. He's had a lot of home run records in Sam's time. Not as many this year. Ala Ulu flicks her bat to stay alive. State has hit 48 homers in 52 games. Last year, a school record 73. It's a lot like Missouri. These two teams had historic home run seasons a year ago. They've had to win in different ways this year and have found it hard to do so on the seventh pitch Malaulu pops it up and Jenna Lair the gold glove shortstop puts her away a couple of words of encouragement for Nadia Barbary as Malaulu takes the dugout a few words for uh, Quana Brownlee who's on deck as well that's the kind of communicator they Say Chloe Malaulu is. We'll see if Barbary took her advice. Freshman third baseman. <laughs> mm. Lauren Krings is throwing with good velocity, working that screwball as well. We talked about her curve, rise, and change up, but that screwball, she's throwing these righties hard in, 70 miles an hour, right at the knees. It'll be hard to get their barrels to that pitch. Ball. No swing, says Chris Neighbors at first. Don Brown is at third, by the way. Got on our umpiring crew tonight. Barbary 0 for her last 10. Freshman who have been the leadoff hitter for five straight games. Dropped to fifth on Sunday, back up to second today. That's popped up. Third baseman Daly gives way to Laird. Got a couple of pop outs secured by Jenna Laird. Yeah, Lauren Kring with, Kring's with a couple of pop up outs and can spin that rise ball. And it's really interesting the fact that she is more up in the zone, but her batted ball distribution is pretty much 50 50 or pretty close to it 46% on the ground, 54% in the air. Has the ability to work that change up more down the zone and Surprised actually just looking at that with how she pitches that it's not more fly ball outs. It's in the dirt to Aquana Brownlee. So you see a pitcher like this who has all the tools if you're Mississippi State. What's your approach early against Lauren Krings? Yeah, you got to see the ball down for sure. It can't get fooled with her changeup that she likes to throw in pretty much any count, but seeing the ball down and she throws with that good velocity makes it in that screwball for a strike. Senior Brownlee takes one too tight. Really nice year for Quanta Brownlee, who's played in every game and started them all but one. Leading Mississippi State in hits, tied for second in home runs and doubles. After being a part-time player for three years. State lost a lot from last year's Super Regional team, notably Mia Davidson, the SEC's all-time home run leader. Brownlee has been one of the players to fill, try to fill those pretty big shoes. That ball's to short. 
And Jenna Laird has them all this. Look out with us. They swept Kentucky. So now he hasn't been able to leave. They've had him in the dugout ever since then. It's really a great reset. And I asked him, you know, how have you seen the growth of this team? He said they wouldn't have been able to survive a 14 game losing streak if they didn't have a strong psychological base. So the growth for Mississippi State on the mental side has been huge. Courtney, it's an awesome story and it's something that the softball program and the other athletic programs are investing in here at Mississippi State. Sam Ricketts talked about that. I think the last few years we've all heard a lot about mental health and why it matters it doesn't always get put into action in the way that Mississippi State has done yeah these athletes are dealing with a lot of pressure a lot of expectations from all different angles on social media with their families with their teammates softly hit to short by Maddie Gallagher and she is called out at first and remember Missouri's already used a challenge in the game the Tiger dugout seems pretty certain, but do you risk a second challenge already? It doesn't look like Larissa Anderson will. Yeah, I don't think you can, and both of them were plays at first base that were tight. This, to me, is much tighter than Jenna Laird leading off the game, first play of the game, and I think she would have been safe, yeah. Larissa Anderson was so quick, the first batter of the game, to use that, that challenge doesn't have a lot of options now. Get two challenges. Crew chiefs uh, or umpires, notably crew chiefs, can initiate reviews in the sixth inning, but long way to go here. Larissa Anderson didn't want to risk it, and Missouri probably lost a base runner there as a result. Megan Mall <laughs> takes a floater. An Aphis. <laughs> A backhand flip change up 46 miles an hour. And you're seeing Reese Berline throw three different speeds, actually. She'll bring it up to about 67 miles an hour and then has an off speed drop ball that she'll take 10 off at about 57. And then that change up just floating in there at 46. What's the slowest pitch you threw in a game, <laughs> intentionally? You know, back in my day, we didn't have radar guns. Uh, and we didn't even, no, I'm just joking. Um, that's a good, I, I wish I knew. I don't think it was 46. Change up and changing speeds was not my forte. My change up did not look like Reese's. And you can tell just in a couple of pitches how all of a sudden a rice ball at 60 looks a lot harder. <laughs> Yeah. after you get a little flip at 46. Yeah, effective velocity, all these coaches now studying up on that, and knowing how their pitches throw and their pitch shapes. Ball pops it into short center. Riley St. Clair got a late break, but puts it away. Two quick outs for Reese Perline. Some folks out on the berm here at Bogle Park. Awesome place to watch a softball game. This ball hit to second from Peyton Jackson and booted by Moreno. And the worst defense in the SEC by fielding percentage commits its first error of the game. I, I already wrote down 4-3, just a ball that wasn't struck very hard at all. A play that needs to be made 10 out of 10 times. So the inning stays alive. It's not blasphemy to say that it is the worst defense in the SEC. Statistically speaking, 955 Missouri tied for the best fielding percentage in the league this year. On the other hand, Mississippi State coming into the game had committed an error in more than three quarters of its games this season. And Sam Ricketts knows it is a weakness. Columbia native Maddie Snyder 
That ball is sizzled into the gap by Snyder and a long way to the wall. Jackson's going to round third. Snyder's going to go two third. It is a triple for Matty Snyder. And Missouri has the first run of the 2023 SEC tournament on a Matty Snyder three bagger. Missouri's first game in the postseason one of the first games in the nation of the postseason and Natty Snyder with two outs coming from the nine hole stepping up and hitting this mistake that is left up in the zone a 2-0 count and Matty Snyder knowing that's a hitter's count looking to just hit a ball hard finds a gap Jackson get a score easily remember she got on from the air Missouri taking advantage of that defensive mistake by Mississippi State for a routine ground ball, it's an unearned run. And Snyder with her second triple. Now Jenna Laird to first and Hall is right there. Maddie Snyder doesn't have a double on the year, but she's got two triples. And Missouri's got the lead on a Maddie Snyder RBI triple here in the opening game. First of a dozen. All 13 SEC teams make it to the tournament. Top four seeds, double buys, Tennessee, Georgia, Auburn, Arkansas. We'll see them on Thursday. We'll start a quadruple header tomorrow at 10 a.m. local. Sleep quickly. <laughs> yeah. LSU and Ole Miss in a 6-11 game. It's a league where anybody can beat anybody, really. Ball down. Missouri, the last seed, just won a series over Arkansas, the fourth seed last week. What do you think the conversation is here? Riley Burline after a couple of innings. Looks to me like he's talking about the rise ball potentially with how he's showing a height up near the up near the eyes, but could be. Love that we have that camera to get that look though. It's great. One and two to Madison Kennedy. Josh Johnson, a Mississippi State pitching coach, sitting there. I mean, this is happening all the time in games, right? And oftentimes in the 50 games, 55 games they play, we don't get a chance to see it. But you're seeing a pitching coach work with the freshman pitcher and just talk about the past inning and adjustments that need to be made. How much as a pitcher did you like having that discussion in between innings? How much did you like to just lay off and give yourself a break? It has to be a balance, but more times than not, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved, I'm, I always want to know what I can do better and adjustments that I can make. Well, your mic's a little close to your face if you want an adjustment right now. I'm kidding, it's fine. Oh, I was about to adjust it. You can't fool me like that. <laughs> See, the student never goes away. I mean. Even if the teacher is faulty. Probably also, you know, talking about who's coming up second time through that she's going to face them now with Honold and Daly, that next two hitters that she'll have to face. Right now it's Lauren Krings against Kennedy. And a six pitch is a foul ball on a check swing. Amanda, uh, wondering, uh, what adjustments did you make when you pitched in a helmet that one time? Oh, thanks, Courtney, for bringing up that great memory. Um, <laughs> The adjustment with that was how to survive 100 degree temperatures with a helmet on uh, and work through a lot of sweat going on. I think that was how'd the you adjustment. do? Uh, we lost that game. You guys are just on it, just postseason, just ready to go. Have I told you how happy I am to have Courtney as part of our team this year? <laughs> oh my goodness! It's a true story, though. We're actually all wearing helmets for tomorrow's double header. <laughs> I don't know if you got the memo. That's going to be a hot one. Yeah. Three and two for Kennedy. Eighth pitch coming in the at bat from Krings. And Kennedy pops it up. This is Kara Daly, and Krings has retired the first four. Be careful not to trip over. Service dogs. Walk down the <laughs> stairs at your own risk here at Bogle. <laughs> Look at it. He's looking at the camera, or he or she. <laughs> it's a guard dog right there. That's as close as you can legally get if you're carrying the camera. <laughs> but if the dog does want to come up to the booth, we'd, we'd love to see it. 
or if you know there's like a stray hog around somewhere. I know you're experienced with animals <laughs> here. Look at this good creature. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh. <laughs> this is called the SEC Network. It's fouled away by Jackie McKenna, one on one. McKenna's had a nice run down the stretch for Mississippi State, senior catcher. Last two weeks, six RBIs, nearly an 1,100 OPS on base plus slugging. It's a cleanup hitter for the first time on Sunday, and she's in the five spot today. Lauren Kring's a big strikeout pitcher in her Missouri career. More than a strikeout per inning. And a little number here. Kring's will field her position well. Yeah, this Missouri team just so fundamental on defense in every position on the field. Five in a row retired by Krings. Shea Moreno, who will try to help make up for that crucial error in the top of the inning. And led to the run scoring two out triple. Out. Moreno's missed a bunch of time this season. Mississippi State really hasn't had its full roster for most of the year. Moreno missed 29 games to injuries and for personal reasons. And they're about as healthy as they've been tonight, but their best hitter, Paige Cook, again, is not with the team. It's so hard to work through. Every team is going to have just some kind of injury issues. Some are going to keep some players out for a week. Some are going to keep them out for a game. Might be year-long season injuries and every team's going to go through that but it does seem like mississippi state throughout this entire year has just had one after another you don't want to make excuses but it's real it is the elephant in the room for this mm -hmm. team Ball, down. it's a little low yeah. bulldogs have lost 10 players this season for at least a game to injury or for personal reasons. They, they always like to use a lot of players, but there are nearly 15 per game this year. So you'll see Sam Ricketts wheel and deal with her roster. Moreno down the left field line. That ball gets past a diving Snyder, and Moreno is going to get to second base. Shea Moreno, the first Mississippi State base runner. Coming in on a three for 26, she finds green grass for a double. Yeah, you could tell that Natty Snyder was going to work for that catch as Shea Moreno is able to sit back on a changeup and drive it down the line. Looked like she kind of got mixed up of, am I going to let this drop? Am I going to dive for it? Well, I'm already here, so I'm going to dive for it. I'll just keep that in front and keep her Moreno at first base if you're Natty Snyder and don't get a better jump. So Snyder with an errant play to give Moreno an extra base. That's after, in the top of the inning, Moreno's error got Snyder to the plate where she delivered for the one scoring triple. RBI opportunity for Riley Hull. He gets on base a lot. Ball. Hull is only a 231 hitter. Just a 256 slugging percentage. And yet, she walks all the time. 23 of them. And she never strikes out, only six. So she'll give you a tough at bat. out of play for strike two.
One, two. That's out of Derek. Your pitching coach, you see a, a non competitive two strike pitch like that. Would you stay away from it on a 2 2? Well, I, I like the way that she actually threw it there because of how aggressive Hull was early in the at bat. Took a big hack, first pitch of the AB. Chase that pitch out of the zone right there, too. You see the Riley Hull, I mean, beautiful swing. She is swinging big this entire at bat, looking to drive in a run. Like the way that trying to mix in that speed or mix in that change up, I wouldn't be surprised to see it again. Only strikes out 6% of her plate appearances despite that pretty hefty swing. Six pitch coming. And Hall takes it. And when Riley Hall's batting, you might as well just go ahead and wind the count up to ball three. <laughs> Second full count of the inning. 23rd pitch coming into second for Krings. And Hall hits a tapper foul off her body. Yeah, and she doesn't swing and miss very often, just 10% of the time, which is the lowest on the team, just about. Another eight pitch at bat. And a bouncer wide of third. It's Laird, the gold glove, shortstop in time. Smooth operator in the shortstop hole. And Jenna Laird in Missouri hold the lead after two. Final piece of media court, which was we don't have video because Larissa Anderson said, if anyone videotaped me, I would sue them for defamation of character. Her <laughs> dancing on the table in the locker room as Hoddle flies out to left. I mean, they lost a bunch of leaders last year. Super seniors, Kim Ward, Kendall Bailey, Brooke Wilmus. Important hitters, uh, but important human beings. And yeah, Missouri still has a lot of talent, but it makes sense that it took them a little longer to gel. Yeah, it's hard when you lose that core group of players, especially offensively from your starting lineup. Harrod Daly with a pop up on the first pitch. And it is caught eventually by a staggering McKenna. How about that? A quick two outs of the best home run hitters of the team. Two pitches, two outs when you're facing Alex Honnold and Kara Daly. I mean, you're feeling great if you're the freshman in the circle. Like, thank you. Especially after that long 30 pitch inning in the first inning. She needed that. So two pitches, two outs. No way Julia Crenshaw swing. Oh, she's bunting. <laughs> oh! A shock to the system. <laughs> That's one way to do it. I thought it was interesting that Larissa said, we are thinking of ourselves as party crashers, and we're saying that everybody else has had their party. It's time for us to start having our party now. Won the last two against Arkansas in walk-off fashion, so they quite literally partied after the victory at home plate. That was huge for them. And talk to her, too, about are you talking to your team about getting into the NCAA tournament? Is that a conversation that you guys are having? And she said, nope, not talking about any of it. Talking about this game against Mississippi State. We have no control over it. It's going to go out and try to win every game. Crenshaw waits back for that slow change, and she'll be retired by the pitcher, Burline. A five-pitch inning against Missouri's 2-3 full Kentucky tomorrow. Feel like an auctioneer right there. 13 teams, they'll all play over the next three days. You have to win five and five to claim the title if you play today. Four and four tomorrow, three and three Thursday. And yeah, for Florida, big disappointment this season. AM was a pleasant surprise under Tricia Ford, as was Auburn under Mickey Dean and Tony Baldwin's Georgia Bulldogs pick sixth, finished second. Yeah, Auburn and Georgia were two teams that I really thought were going to have good years in the SEC. So to finish or see them finish second and third, 
good seasons for them as South Carolina's here. Check out a game. Improved season for them as well this year. It would be unlikely that South Carolina would play one of these teams, but you never know. Just nice night at the ballpark. It's beautiful. In fact, it would have to be in the SEC championship. It would be a 10 versus a 12 or a 13 if this scouting trip paid off. But especially in the shade, it is just absolutely lovely right now. Selena Daniel making just her sixth start of the year in right field tonight for Mississippi State. That gets a piece, got a piece of Crenshaw too. So Lauren Kring's two innings does not have a strikeout yet. He's given up one hit. What do you make of the junior Kring so far? I like the way that she's mixing it, being able to throw a bunch of her different pitches. Looks like she's relying on that changeup a good amount, mixing it in. She looks confident, too, tonight. Oh, there's that changeup we were just talking about. Woo! There's that strikeout. Yeah, just two swings and misses for Lauren Kring's tonight. This changeup, look at how it just falls off the table. I mean, Daniel is way in front of that pitch. That's a pitch that Lauren Krings can throw in any count at any time. Woo! Take a little off of it. That is an enchanting delivery. Here's Briley St. Clair, who can play softball, and Courtney Lyles, she does a few other interesting things. Well, Kevin and Amanda, uh, she has a lot of talents. Briley St. Clair, she's from Alabama. She lives near Wise Lake. She saw a video of someone catfish noodling, so she said, yeah, I think I can do that. She pulled this fish out of a river riverbed with her bare hands. Come on. Is it a yes or no for you guys? It's, it's, it's an impossible, Courtney. I, <laughs> I couldn't pull a like a goldfish out with my bare hands, I don't think. <laughs> that thing's it's a no huge. For me. Yeah, it's no a, for me, no for you, Amanda. You're the redfish catcher. It's a no for catcher. me. I only fish with a pole, and I catch redfish. I mean, that is bigger than Briley St. Clair, it looks like, that catfish. <laughs> no. Wow. Ground out's here, and she'll noodle her way back to the dugout. That is the early contender for a picture of the tournament right there. <laughs> Top to third from Malaulu. Quick inning for Krings. A 1-0 game after three. Le Reese Berline still out there after three good innings. And a high fly from Riley Trezell. Well, nestle of the glove of St. Clair. Reese Berline is game, so when she's throwing the ball more down the zone with her drop ball, gotten some weak contact, that one pitch left up, and a nine hole drilled it. Nice late zip on that pitch to Gallagher. And Sam Ricketts told us she loved starting games with Berline down the stretch. She only started nine because of her competitiveness. Felt like she has the mentality to go out right away and compete. Some pitchers on her team are more well served as middle relievers, some as closers. Uh, they think Berline is somebody who's best in the first few innings. And here she is midway through the fourth. Oh, to on Matty Gallagher. I mean, this is a pitcher who struck out 14 against Purdue on March the 15th. So Reese Berline's had a great freshman year. But under the bright lights of tournament play, I have to imagine it's a little bit different. You could tell that Josh Johnson was working with her in the dugout, working with her to give her the pitch call, talking to her about her rise ball. She threw back-to-back -back rise balls, both well out of the strike zone. Back to the drop ball, it's scooped at first by Hull. 
So up, up, down, and away. Yeah, that's right. That rise ball seems to be a non-competitive, non-issue, non-factor within these at-bats, but still getting them to roll over that drop ball. Two down for the senior, Megan Mall. Up and in, that's a fair ball. Mall didn't think so. It's called it out. Mall is saying it hit me in the leg, and Paul Eds is going to bring the umpire and crew together. Megan Mall didn't move and immediately pointed to her right leg. The umpire's going to stick with it out. Based on Megan Mall's reaction, I suspect I know what we're going to see here. Yeah, right wow. there. It did. Initially, look, we're going to have a, another challenge here. Initially off the bat. Missouri. Here is the centralized video review center in Birmingham. It'll take a look at this, the SEC video center. I don't think they'll need many replays for this. Me either. Live, I, I definitely thought it just went off of her bat and in play, but you can clearly see it change directions. Right there. If this is your first uh, SEC softball game of the year, that's a different review process than you've seen in the past. There is new O2O -O technology, official to official. Umpires have earpieces, headsets. They can speak directly with the review center in Birmingham, whereas in the past you had to go lumber over to the side, put on the headset, wait. Now it is done in an instant. And the SEC's investment made for a much better game and a much more streamlined process. So huge credit to them. That's called a strike on Mall on the check swing. Who's really thrilled with the umpiring in this sequence. You can tell she's frustrated. Going to say that she's swung on this curveball and Berline's going to get the call and work from ahead. Ball out. All just a 185 hitter, 297 on base, and she'll go down, up and in. Reese Burlines retired seven straight. Beans at times skied through high school, and it's not what seems like uh, an apples to oranges or even an apples to pineapples comparison. Downhill skiing to softball defense, but in that conversation you had with her earlier in the year, Amanda, it works for her philosophically in so many different ways the visualization aspect of it the discipline the angles that's in the left from barbary and that ball is gone nadia barbary sneaks it inside the pole and over the fence and barbary will ski her way across the bases to tie this opening game at one what a beautiful swing by nadia barbary I've been impressed whenever I've watched Mississippi State play with her specifically and her beautiful swing. Look at how she stays inside of this screwball. Line drive down the line, just sneaking over the left field fence. I love the reaction of the third base coach, Tyler Bratton, pumped up that Nadia has tied up this game. Not an easy pitch to keep fair, but Nadia Barbary did it. One swing, one run. Her first home run for Nadia Barbary, a couple of weeks, her fourth of the season. And Mississippi State has tied this game.
thanks to the only freshman in the starting lineup. Now Brownlee, strike two. It tells me too with Barbary being so aggressive early in the count to that inside pitch, he's clearly going up looking for that pitch. I mean, that's what it looks like when you are hunting a side of the plate, you're hunting a certain speed. She was on time and she knew as soon as she saw that inside pitch, that's what she wanted to swing at. Brownlee goes down to dig this one to third. And Daly throws her out. Aquana Brownlee 0 for 2. You never know who the hero is going to be. Barbary, who had found herself in the leadoff spot five times the last couple of weekends. We had a two hole today. Freshman from Douglasville, Georgia. It's a sand ball to Madison Kennedy. And again, the Mississippi State may well need to make the NCAA tournament. They seem to be right around the cut line. And maybe they make it with a loss, maybe not. But if you're Mississippi State, don't make it a woulda, coulda, shoulda situation. Get this win. Get a chance for another good win with Alabama tomorrow. We think Missouri's in the field, but Mississippi State, again, a very close call right now. And you never know what teams are going to take a bit away from yeah. a, a likely at-large team anyway to cop this tournament. Yeah, you would rather just control what you can control, or as best as you can control winning and losing, but you'd rather just win this game and try to add one more win to your resume than a 29-24 and record versus 20-25. and Decent strength the schedule for Mississippi State sitting at 23, too. That'll certainly help. Tell that Lauren Krings is being really careful with Madison Kennedy. Been hot lately coming to this game, a hitter that has a lot of experience, but has been really hard on herself, Coach Rickett said of Madison Kennedy, but coming to her own at the plate the last few weeks. Green light. Yeah, why not? Ooh. 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 That wouldn't have been the best 3-0 pitch no, to swing no. at. <laughs> There's the Missouri bullpen. It's double barreled. Megan Schumacher and Taylor Pinnell. Kennedy did homer off Krings in their regular season series a year ago. She's got a plum count here, and she'll take a big rip. It was interesting how Coach Ricketts talked about, too, just her growth at the plate. She's a hitter who is smart, really likes to learn. And Coach Ricketts said, we took a deeper dive into what kind of mover she is, tweaked her swing that way, looked deeper into how her body is moving, felt like she had a little too much movement, so they took some away. Wanted her to hold her hit back long enough to and then let her hands fly. Oh. She held back as long as she could there, but Krings went off off speed for her second strikeout. Yeah, after that home run, both of her outs have come with her change up a pitch again that she loves to throw in any count, can throw it through the zone or get hitters to chase it out of the zone. Madison Kennedy with a big swing and a big strikeout for Lauren Krings. Back to back outs after giving up that home run. Had she followed all the way through, she could have hit that with the back swing. <laughs> Two down and a fly ball from Jackie McKenna will end the inning, but not before Nadia Barbary. Up in the zone and down the zone, and Nadia Barbary also hit that home run to tie it. Freshman stepping up in their first SEC tournament game. 1-1 one, one game. Three innings to go, our opener in the SEC tournament for tomorrow's quadruple header on day two. Winner of this game will play the fifth seed, Alabama. And a likely date with Montana Fouts tomorrow in the late afternoon. Peyton Jackson, number eight hitter against Berline, who typically doesn't throw this long. 
Only her ninth start of the season. Didn't know if it was going to be a one time through the order situation, but the way she's throwing the ball, Samantha Ricketts is confidently stuck with her. Jackson, a three year player at Texas Tech, had a great career in the Big 12. 395 on base, 492 slugging career with Texas Tech. Had an OPS of 1,032 last year. It has not translated to this point in Columbia. Off the end of the bat for Jackson and the third baseman, Barbary. Off the home run in the bottom of the inning as the assist to start the top. Number six, Here's some action for Mississippi State. Josie Marin there. Strikeout leader is a freshman. Reese Burline mixing up three different pitches with her rise, curve, and drop ball. That rise ball has a good chase rate, a good chase rate on it. And the chase rate swing percentage outside the zone. Next to six four three charts for that note. And as Snyder grounds out and sends the Maddie Snyder triple, it's nine up, nine down. Reese Berline perfect the second time through the order. Yeah, she's really looking good. I really do like the, the way that she's mixing her pitches. That rise ball has been a pitch. At times has been non-competitive, more out of the zone, but I like the way that she's throwing more down in the zone. Looking good. So the third time through for Jenna Lear. Is that flip change? Such a good pitch for her. Mixing that in with her rise, drop, and curveball. And a whole lot of 0 1 counts here. First pitch strike seven of the last nine batters for Berline. And layered a couple of ground outs to first. Tried to wait back on this one. One and two instead. Is there an adjustment that stands out to you third time through the lineup for Missouri? Looks like they're recognizing that change up a little bit better. You can see Jenna Laird take a big swing at that pitch, but still throwing him off. Just seeing, I mean, she's being able to go up and down. And as a hitter, that's so tough and change speed. That's what's leading to a lot of her success tonight. Went up there, and Laird has the second Missouri hit of the game. And the ball is booted by Daniel and Wright. Another defensive misplay for Mississippi State. It'll be a base hit and an E9 in all likelihood, and a runner at second for Missouri. Talking about going up, down in the zone, and then Laird getting something that's up and getting on top of it, hitting it hard just past Shea Moreno, who could have gotten her glove on that to at least keep it on the infield. Instead, it goes to the outfield, and there is a bobble. And speed moves into to scoring position. It's a single and an E9. It got past Moreno. And Daniel's only making her sixth start of the season in right field. She commits her first error. And here is the dangerous Honnold, who gets a pitch to hit, blasts it to right center, and Honnold hits it apparently right off the top of the fence. It's a fair ball, as noted by Chris Neighbors, the first base umpire, and it is a run scoring double. Looking at it live, I thought that hit over the top of the yellow line, but on the field it is called a double for a 2-1 Missouri lead. And Missouri has already used two challenges in this game. Yeah, Missouri is seeing this up pitch well. Laird and Honold seeing the ball up in the zone. Honold 
seen so much of it. Yeah, just hit the yep. yellow line. It ends up bouncing back. Missouri handling this up pitch well, but Honold gets her team back on top, and Missouri answers right back. Yeah, good job by Chris Neighbors. That ball cushioned right below the top of the yellow line, and now the umpires will get together. You could reverse this, and then Mississippi State would obviously challenge. And they're not going to. Just hits right off, huh. right off the corner, at the top of the fence. A little squish. Surprised they're going more up in the zone this third time through the order with the success of her changeup and her drop ball. It was it's been so successful against these hitters. The only time they've gotten into trouble is when she's left it up. All pitches have been up in the zone, or all hits have been up in the zone. Carrie Daly. Ball down. What's down? What's the argument for it, do you think? to give them a different look and second time through there were a few more pop-ups in the first time through but I like that change up of hers want to see her throw that more through it there Gary Daly a first inning walk 10 home runs second best power hitter on the team after the All-SEC player Alex Honnold picked up her 45th RBI of the year. And that ball to the left side, the shortstop Kennedy not going to get there in time. Base hit for Daly and the Tigers' top three reach on three consecutive two-out hits. And now the question for Samantha Ricketts. With Marin ready, do you stick with Burline? And obviously you would risk Daly coming up there, but they chose two pitch to Honnold, who has a 557 on base percentage. And it burned them. Crenshaw fakes a bunt. Now there's a rundown, and Honnold's going to be out at the plate. Missouri tried to squeeze one through. Daly took off for second. Pretty good way to kick it off. 2-1 Mizzou. 13 in the 12. And again, this is a 13 seed, which made the SEC Tournament Championship game last year, hosted a regional, and a 12 seed, which won a regional at Florida State and hosted a super regional. So the SEC maybe not as top heavy as it is some years, but it is deep as it ever is. Two strikes, Lauren Krings here to Shea Moreno. Julia Crenshaw on that last pitch, we talked about her back behind the plate, helped get Lauren Krings that outside corner, framed up that pitch nicely. Love to watch her receive. It's crazy to think that she had not caught before this year. Ball. She's a backup second baseman. She played some short. She played some left. Chris Anderson said we needed some help in the bullpen and asked, can you catch some practices? And she compared her to JT Real Muto, the catcher in Major League Baseball with the Phillies, because JT's sister coached with Larissa at Hofstra. Offside. And Larissa had seen JT in high school. He was a shortstop. He was a pitcher. Drafted by the Marlins, they make him a very athletic catcher. And she said, I see a lot of similarities in the way that he and Julia approach their games. The rally cups are out on 2-2 for Moreno. Doubled her first time. That's down the right field line. Jackson is there, and there is an out for Krings in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, and Coach Anderson said, too, of Crenshaw, I think she can develop to be one of the best catchers in the country. 
And you can tell, I mean, I'm just sitting there watching her during that entire Moreno at bat. I mean, she's, look, she's talking to the umpire right now. She's communicating to her pitcher. She's looking at the dugout, talking to Coach Anderson about where a pitch location was on the outside corner. Amanda, I'm wondering, what did you need from your catcher, like when you guys formed that battery that Julia's having to learn now how to adapt to these pitchers? Well, I honestly loved a good receiving catcher. If if I had a catcher back there that just, it's a certain look, Courtney, that's hard to explain, but if you're a pitcher, you know when you have a good receiving catcher, it's just so much fun to throw to somebody like Julia Crenshaw, who is just like that. I didn't care if my catcher threw out any runners <laughs> at second base. I mean, probably here a little bit, but I'd rather than be a better receiver. Good dive into the bag there by Frizzell, who received that ground ball beautifully, and Riley Hall is retired for the second time. They think Crenshaw will be a really good receiver for Krings and his pitching staff, too, because as Larissa Anderson says, she has middle infield hands. Yeah, and she didn't even become the everyday catcher until midway through this season. Two down for Daniel. That's popped up. Who's going to get it? Daly will. Lauren Krings fly to get a home run at some point this series. Yeah, she's talking about other outfielders, you know, making great plays. Like, she needs to step up and make a great play. That's right. <laughs> step up, Kaylee. You haven't made enough great plays in your life, <laughs> national champion you. So two one game new pitcher for Mississippi State, the freshman Josie Marin, their strikeout leader. So two freshmen in a circle for the Bulldogs today. And Marin gets a ground ball to the new second baseman, Graf. That is Macy Graf who makes the play on Julie Crenshaw. And Josie Marin coming into the circle, freshman, throwing a lot of innings for this team. Two freshman pitchers getting to pitch in this SEC tournament game. Five innings for Burline, pitched very well. Riley Frizzell, hard hit ball, left center field, St. Clair. There's a nice outfield play, sliding to make it a close one at second, but it's a double all the same as Frizzell bursted out of the box for a two-base hit. Could tell that Frizzell was looking for an inside pitch. Watch whenever she takes this swing that she steps out toward third base. See how her hips are open. It makes room for her hands to get to that inside pitch. Does not step straight, steps open, and drives that pitch to the left side. That's a great shot right there that she stepped open to sell out for that inside pitch and gets herself into scoring position. Fifth hit of the game, third extra base hit for Mizzou. Frizzell will be lifted for a pinch runner. Kaylee Langer, where number 99 will run. And the batter is Long Island native Maddie Gallagher. Marissa Anderson, longtime coach at Hofstra on the island. Gallagher played with Jenna Laird quite a bit growing up. Maddie from Port Washington, Jenna's from East Meadow. And so Gallagher, after a couple of years in South Carolina, entered the transfer portal, and this was a natural fit to those Long Island connections. He's grounded out a couple of times. Big lead there from Langer, the pinch runner. McKenna looked her back at second. They are aggressive with their leads, Missouri. And Larissa Anderson says, we're not a team of speed demons, but they have stolen 100 bases. Because they're very smart base runners, and they are base runners that push the envelope. That's the second base, Graf tested for the second time this inning, and Langer takes third on out number two. 
Let's take a look at Embrace the If, brought to you by Regions. If Missouri out hits its opponent, Missouri does not lose 25 and 0 when out hitting opponents this season. And wouldn't you know it, right now they're out hitting Mississippi State 5 to 2. Interesting. There's so many stats in her game, right? So many interesting stats that just hop out off the page at you. It's definitely one of them. Well, you really sold my number there, man. It's definitely one of them. Thanks for the hard sell right there. <laughs> That's definitely the one. Yeah. We couldn't have used any other stat. That's Thanks. the one. Wait. You truly did embrace the if, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. Pinch hitter for Missouri, Katie Chester. Chester goes up to get one and knock it into the Bulldog bullpen. Chester pinch hitting in the spot of Megan Mall, a designated player. Freshman who had 44 home runs in high school at Liberty, Missouri. Second most home runs in Missouri High School Athletic Association history. has light tower power. She has airplane level heft in her bat. And she has hit three home runs this season as a freshman. A 2-1 Missouri lead in the sixth. That's another one in the dirt. Langer has a happy feet down there, but McKenna's been able to block a couple. Yeah, you know, this Reese Berline, Josie Marin combination, two freshmen, same combination that threw against OU earlier this season and threw well. Josie got the start, Reese Berline came in and threw three scoreless frames against OU. A lot of belief in these two freshman pitchers. <laughs> this is going to sound silly, but. It's an accomplishment. Mississippi State played Oklahoma twice and was not run ruled. This is the inimitable team in college softball right now. You make it to seven innings, you feel happy. They lost 9 3 in one of them. Had an inning where they gave up nine, but felt good about six shutout innings along the way. Two strike pitch. Another one in the dirt. Good job by McKenna back there behind the plate. You can see Marin likes to throw a lot of drop balls, gets. A lot of batted balls on the ground because of that drop ball. You expect another drop ball here? Yeah. Hard sell. Embrace the if. Go to that change up. That's a good pitch, too. And that's the thing about both of these freshmen is that they both can change speeds very well. Josie Marin, a big strikeout pitcher for Mississippi State. Ninth among freshmen nationally. About eight and a half strikeouts per seven. Out of Grimes, Iowa. And a career high 102 pitches. And a complete game went over Auburn on Saturday. Her 3 2. <laughs> Will be a called third strike. And ring up another K for Marin to keep this. Got a pinch hitter to lead off Mississippi State's fifth inning. Matalasi Fapito, 9-1-2 and two for the Dogs, and Fapito way out front of strike one. That Lauren Krings changeup has just been on. Love the way that she's thrown that pitch tonight against some big swings from Mississippi State. Fapito, terrific career, a down year. 151 hitter. 264 on base. She tried to sneak another one past her. It's Matalasi Fapito, Chloe Malaulu, and the home run hitter Nadia Barbary. 9 1 and 2 is the Bulldogs wrap around the order with six outs to go. Maybe in their season. That's out of play. Mississippi State 28 and 24, 48 in the RPI. 
Program record 25 regular season games versus ranked opponents. A lot of opportunities only went 5 and 20 in them. Saw South Carolina in this game the last couple of years. They're the 10 seed this year. They are here. They're buying some merchandise. Fun way to spend a Tuesday night. It's a beautiful night. What do you think Kring's best pitch is in a 3 2 spot based on what you've seen tonight? Change up. Go with it again. Both of her strikeouts have been on a changeup. Multiple balls put into play. Out pitches have been on her changeup. Because of the rise. Our curveball moving up a little bit too. That's a big swing by Fa Pito. What do you read there if you're the pitcher on that swing? That she's on time, more on time than she would be with a changeup. Still going to that same pitch. Curveball, it's a little bit up. Mm. Bob Pito does have 41 career homers. She's a great power hitter historically, but only four this year. Just a 264 on base percentage. The pinch hitter leading off the sixth will take a changeup. So she went back to it, Krings, and missed badly. And Matalasi Fa Pito draws a leadoff walk. Yeah, it's a good at bat by Fa Pito. Take that pitch, not by not be fooled by that changeup that was in the dirt. St. Clair will come back in to run for her, so you have speed at first base. It's the first walk of the game handed out by Krings. St. Clair, maybe Mississippi State's fastest player now, represents the tying run, and the top of the order is up. And there is no one currently throwing in that Missouri bullpen. There are a couple of interested spectators. And there are no arms windmilling. Malauru bunts it, pops it up. It lands fair. And then it spirals foul. Good communication by the Missouri defense to read the spin on that. I mean, as soon as that was popped up and nobody caught it in the air, this is probably their best bet is just to hope that it's going to roll the other side of the line. Malaulu a pop out and a ground out. <laughs> Home run hitter Nadia Barbary waiting. St. Clair with seven steals and eight tries out at first. Will she risk it? Not going here on strike two. Did she swing? No. Good take by Mala Ulu to hold back on this curveball. Just barely keeping her barrel, <laughs> pulling it back quick. It's close. That had a little bend to it. Two and two for the two-year captain, Mala Ulu, with an emergency hack. <laughs> it's barely getting a piece of that changeup, but now look, third time through, the hitters are going to start to recognize that pitch a little bit better out of the hand. They've seen it. 
They're talking about it in the dugout. Eighty pitch for Kring, still silent in the Missouri bullpen. That smoked foul. I mean, if you can solve a Rubik's Cube in the dugout, you can hit off the of Lauren Krings, right? Like, those two things go hand in hand, right? You could solve a Rubik's Cube. There's, I don't think, anything you can do. <laughs> Trying. Looks like Selena Daniel has the cube. The Rally Rubik's Cube. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's a new one. Seventh pitch. Malaulu a dribbler. She is a pretty good runner, and she is out at first. St. Clair eluded the tag, and the tying run is at second for the home run hitter for the fourth inning. Nadia Barbary leading us to today's high-speed play brought to you by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. It's a high-speed home run, a line drive home run. What went 203 feet? Doesn't matter. 203 feet is still a run, just like a 260-foot home run. The freshmen, all the freshmen from Mississippi State who've gotten a chance to play, stepping up in this game. Do you have an exact distance on that, or is this your guesstimate? <laughs> it's a guesstimate. <laughs> Barbara, another big cut. Just the fourth home run of her freshman season, Nadia Barbary. Last home run, April 9th at Texas A&M. One month ago to the day. These are some mighty rips. Kevin, you mentioned the Rubik's Cube. Not a rally Rubik's Cube. It's actually a fidget object. They have a box of them, and Dr. Joey Case, their mental performance coach, he hands these out to the team. They play with them in the dugout. It helps them clear their mind, be centered, especially in big, big moments like this one. I love that. I, I still want to call it the rally Rubik's Cube, but, <laughs> but I love that idea. I have a feeling if Barbary gets a hit here, you might have cut on to something with that. We may need a Rubik's Cube for the booth. Mm, yeah. Good big moments for us, too. I was going to say, I'll try to get you one if you guys want one up in the booth. That'd be so sweet of you. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> you got the arm to throw from down there. Yeah, no problem. Two and two for Barbary. You ever try to solve a Rubik's Cube, Amanda? No. Courtney, you ever try to solve a Rubik's Cube? No, but the valedictorian in my high school class did one behind his back while he gave his speech. The, the good really news, rubbed it the in. The good news is you don't hold the grudge still. He went to MIT. It worked out for him. <laughs> Strike out of Barbary. Krings goes down in the dirt at off speed to pick up a seismic second out. It's a pitch that she just continues to go to, even if it's not been absolutely 100% perfect in this game. So much confidence behind that pitch to throw it through the zone, out of the zone, gets the home run hitter to strike out after giving up the home run. And as a pitcher, let me tell you, that feels good. Her eighth swing and miss tonight. Time run at second, St. Clair. Aquana Brownlee, number three hitter, takes ball one. St. Clair is getting some massive secondary leads. No doubt she's going to score on any ball that gets to the grass. It's been such a big year for Brownlee and the power that she has provided after not a ton of at-bats in her first three seasons, just a 225 average, 9 RBI. And look at this season. Same amount of games and more home runs, more production thriving in her senior year. One and two. Krings on the 90th pitch of her night. 
This is up and away. At times tonight, solving Lauren Krings has been about as difficult as solving a Rubik's Cube with your hands behind your back. Tremendous in the postseason a year ago, off to a great start. Can she get the last out of the six? Quite yet. And again, if you're reading the bat here, if you're Krings, what do you see from Brownlee? I just really like Krings' changeup. To me, it's more about a pitcher's strength than as much as a hitter's weakness and the way that she's thrown that changeup tonight. She throws it again. Brownlee tops it to third, and Daly's throw is there. And the inning is over. Missouri's got the lead into the seventh in game one. Missouri to second run. After a home run from Nadia Barbary in the fourth had tied the game. We are 2-1. Missouri, a likely NCAA tournament team. Based on the resume, Mississippi State, a team that appears to be one of the last few in or out. And the Bulldogs will try to keep it right here and keep their season alive. Peyton Jackson leads off in the seventh against Josie Merritt. It's our first of 12 games over the next five days, Amanda, here at the SEC tournament. And if this is any indication, we're in for one heck of a ride. Yeah, well, it's how the SEC has been played this entire regular season leading up to this tournament. A lot of close games and series were really interesting this year, Kevin, because it felt like one game was going to be close. One game was going to be some sort of run rule blowout type situation. And then one game was going to be like some comeback. It just seemed like every every series kind of had that same theme. Yeah, we'll see uh, LSU tomorrow. We talked to their head coach, Beth Torina. She said, for whatever reason, we were great in game twos. Some teams, Alabama's of the world, Montana Fouts game one, very good early in series. But hard to win on the road in this league. It always is. And this feels like one of those years where the gap between first and last may be as small as ever. Two, two to Jackson, who strikes out looking. Josie Marin has been able to change speeds all throughout the count. This is a drop ball that stays up a bit and just pulls Peyton Jackson, freezes her, expecting that pitch to not be there. To back strikeouts looking for Marin. Ball. Maddie Snyder takes the ball. Missouri team that went 7 and 17 in the SEC. Lost the first seven conference series. Their only series win last weekend, taking two of three with Arkansas. It's amazing that they lost seven series in a row and still ended up winning seven games in the league. And it's a Missouri team that had an amazing run last year. Seven seed went all the way to the championship game on the back of great pitching and timely hitting. Slap to second base, Graf finds it, and throws just in time. I assume they're already hard at work. Jenna Laird one more time. You know, Missouri in this game has been really good with two outs, even going back to the first inning, quick two outs, and then they drew back-to-back -back walks, ended up not scoring in that first inning, but it just set the tone of the mindset, I think, for how Missouri was gonna play in this game. Both the RBIs that they have, in this game have been with two outs. For their five hits with two outs, now five of their <laughs> six hits with two outs. Jenna Laird is two for four. And Jenna Laird was, at this point, has the run number two and the go ahead, potentially the game winning run because of her hit with two outs back in the top of the fifth. 
kept her hands inside, slashed her right back up the middle of the field, went and did homework to how Marin has been throwing these left-handed hitters on the inside corner. So you look there if you're Hanol, the left-handed hitter? I would. She's been trying to use that drop ball inside. And she used it again. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that you notice when you look at Alex Honnold is just her ability to hit to all fields this year. One thing that they worked on with her was being able to get to that inside pitch, getting her hands out, really struggled on the inner half prior to the season. Josh Johnson screaming out of the dugout there just before the pitch to talk to Merritt. Bottom of the seventh, Mississippi State will have the middle of the order, Kennedy McKenna, and then right now be Graf, who came into the game defensively an inning ago for Moreno. Jeff Cottrell, the new hitting coach at Missouri. They have embraced his philosophy as the year has gone on, and with two outs, Missouri excellent tonight. Well, and that includes a couple of walks in there, too, so they're on base percentage. Pretty high with two outs. Five of their six hits, both of their walks have come with two outs. So a mound visit after a strike. And 0-1 to Honnold. Back inside it hit her. Flipped Alex in the knee. And that on-base percentage, which was at 557 coming into the game, will be at 500 tonight. A hit by pitch and a double. Trying to work her on the inside corner with this drop ball again. Could have been the conversation with the pitching coach whenever Coach Johnson came out. It's really careful with Alex Honnold, but now you have to be careful with Kara Daly. The walk off winner twice over the weekend. Ball in. Where would you pitch Kara Daly? Blowing in like that, uh, that drop ball that seems to be working for Josie Marin. <laughs> Comes with a curveball there, but I mean, Kara Daly just has so much power, and I, I'm just always a fan of throwing to a pitcher's strength. So it's like if Josie Marin has been getting more outs with that drop ball, that's 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 how I want to throw to any hitter that she goes up against. Just be more careful. Wow. Kara Daly has made a big adjustment several weeks ago, just eliminated her stride. So on the left was back in 2022 at the SEC tournament last year where she took a big stride. And on the right, she has eliminated that stride. And that's been a big adjustment to help her with her power. Coach Larissa Anderson says her backside doesn't collapse anymore. Better timing and more adjustments within her at bat. More power just like that. Coach Anderson said she was just struggling to get on time. And after the walk-off home run on Sunday off of Shanice Dells, after back-to-back walk-off home runs, Coach Jeff Cottrell, the new hitting coach at Missouri, said, yeah, she's never going to strike again if she's here at Missouri. <laughs> Feels like she recognizes the strike zone a little better, too, with the timing of it. Two on, two out, two one game. And a 2 2 pitch demolished foul. She hit it a mile. Now she doesn't have that any kind of a knee kick, just kind of lifts her heel and just puts it right back down. That front foot doesn't move forward at all, that knee doesn't come up. And they've had a lot of confidence in Kara Daly. Been three or four in the lineup all season long. They've trusted her, always believed in her. Back inside, Daly took it. Marin wanted it. I'm going to tell you, I love the little confidence that Josie Marin pitches with when she really thinks that she has a pitch and has a hitter frozen. She starts to walk off the field, thought that that drop ball inside was a strike, maybe a little bit off the plate. A good at bat here by Kara Daly. 
Great speed on the bases, Laird and Honnold. Marin trying to keep this a one-run game in the seventh. And Daly smokes it down the line. That ball is fair. That will score at least one run. Honnold held it third. And this time, Kara Daly straightened it out just enough to give Missouri a 3-1 lead. What an at-bat by Kara Daly to foul off some pitches and extend her at bat, put pressure on the freshman to make a mistake. This pitch is out, but it's a little bit up. And because it's up, it gives power of Kara Daly a chance to get her barrel out and around that pitch. Another run with two outs for Missouri. All the runs been scored with two outs tonight. They are six for 12 with two walks and a hit by pitch with two outs. Let's check in with Courtney. Guys, talking about Kara Daly, May 4th, Larissa Anderson was quoted in an article and say, Kara, I think she's underperforming. A couple days later, she has back-to-back walk-off home runs, and then she comes up in the SEC tournament with that big hit. I think she heard Larissa. Yeah, she's a last at-bat assassin right now, Gordon, only a sophomore who was in a bit of a slump. That ball's hit well right back up the middle by Crenshaw. Marin has to hurry to get her, but Missouri gets an all-important insurance run. Last chance maybe for the season for Mississippi. Extended that lead to two. And Lauren Kring's back out there. Three outs for the win. And a swinging strike to the cleanup hitter, Madison Kennedy, to start. 93rd pitch of the night. And once again, Lauren Krings has saved her best for the postseason. She's looked really good tonight. Kept her pitch count down at just about 93, entering the seventh, in, seventh inning. Check swing foul by Kennedy, who's in an 0-2 hole. First pitch strikes to 14 of 22 batters for Krings. Has only walked one. Struck out three. A lot of soft contacts. Last season, a five-hit shutout of Alabama in the SEC Tournament quarterfinals. And a fly ball here into center field. Easy pickings for Huddle. Such a big out with how hot Madison Kennedy has been late this season. Part-time starter is a freshman, Lauren Krings. Last year had a huge season. 270-80 ERA. A lot of strikeouts. Two no-hitters. Ball down. We were talking about this in the car on the way here because, you know, when you're with me, we talk about softball all the time. But um, just the experience that Missouri's pitchers have in the postseason could be something that Helps him a lot in these weeks moving forward. The car ride back tonight, you'll be trying to solve the Rubik's Cube that magically appeared in our booth a half inning ago. You know that's not true. You know I'll still be talking softball. <laughs> oh, here's a new little a toy. Jackie McKenna 0 for 2. The senior catcher. And again for Mississippi State. We just don't know what conference tournament week is going to look like. We don't know how other results are going to affect them and their RPI and their strength of schedule. So we're wary of writing the obituary of the season too early, but it is possible that with a loss, they'll go home. Grounded to shortstop, Laird. And they are one out away from that loss. Yeah, probably you know, practice the rest of the week, and then on Sunday, probably watch the selection show together and see if they get in. And if they get in, say, where are we going? Where are we headed? And if they get in, last year they were in a region with Florida State, the number two overall seed. They won two games on the final day. Made it to Super Regional, so with this league and the depth, you get in, you never know. 
but they're not worried about that right now. They need a base runner to have a chance to tie it. Shea Moreno re-enters to bat in the number six position. And a double back of the second. The 100th pitch tonight. Fouled back out of the right hand of Lauren Krings. One, two, three innings. Every other inning in this game for Krings. The first, the third, the fifth. And now one out away from a perfect seventh. And what would be her ninth complete game? Yeah, her changeup has been the pitch for me. In fact, I mean, that pitch hasn't gotten hit hard at all. The three strikeouts that she's had have been on that changeup. Last year in the postseason, 22 innings, two earned. One strike away. That strike will have to wait. <laughs> what are they doing? Purcell and Crenshaw were racing after that ball like it was in play and fighting over it. No, here's the thing. You run all that way. You want to be the one that picks up the ball. <laughs> I mean, look at Larissa's face. She loves it. They're having fun, right? Talking about having fun, being the party crashers, having a party of their own. It's going to be a nice dance party after the game if they get one more strike here. Maybe we'll get video. Alabama awaits the winner. You never know how teams are going to line it up needing to win four games in four days, but very good chance we'll see Montana Fouts, who's pitched in seemingly every big game for Alabama this season. Another 0-2. On the ground to first, Frizzell is there. Krings goes the distance, and Missouri goes on to day two at the SEC tournament.
You are the best part of my life 